Well, good afternoon, family. How are you this afternoon? Let me fix y'all hold up. Let me fix my family. How are you guys? I miss y'all so, so much. Hold up. Wait a minute. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Um, Hold up. Wait a minute. Let me see what's going on. Hold up. Wait a minute. Let me see what's going on with you guys today. I can't. Hold up. I don't want y'all slip and fall off the stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I miss y'all so very much. I'm trying to adjust without knocking stuff off. Amen. Um, hold up. I don't know what this about. Uh, let me see. Um, hold up. I think I'm touching stuff and stuff ain't right. And I don't know. Hold up, family. Hold up. Let me go back. All right. I think I see. I hope y'all see me. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? How y'all doing this afternoon? Hot. It is raining down here in Baltimore, but I come on today because I miss you guys and I told you I would come back on with a word of encouragement. I had to get myself together and I praise be to one of my core people. I tell you, we have been working it out today and the spirit of the Lord laid this on my spirit heavily and we've been up early. So, um, he, it was all right. So I'm going to share with you what he has shared with me and with us. Amen. So, life through the spirit. What is that about? Life through the spirit. Let's talk about it. Go with me. Our key scripture for today is Romans 8, 6 through 15. I'm going to go there. I'll read it in the new in the new uh, in the NIV version. But before we even get started, you know what we do first, but we have to give God the glory and honor. So let us pray first. Heavenly Father, I come to you again, Lord God, with my social media family. I thank you for every life under the sound of my voice, everyone that I am connected to in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for those that you have brought into my life. Now, Lord God, we sit at your feet, Lord God. We decrease, Lord God, so you can increase in us by the Spirit, Lord God. Let this word prick our hearts, Lord God, drawing us closer unto you. In the name of Jesus, continue to help us, Lord God, to order our steps in the way that you want us to go, Lord God. And Lord, let us know what it really means to have life through the Spirit spirit through your spirit and we thank you for your patience we thank you for your guidance we thank you for your grace and your mercy so have your way now in me and through me and through them as well in jesus mighty and awesome name amen 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 life through the spirit go with me to romans 8 6 through 15 i think i'm going to read it in both versions i might read i'm going to read it in the niv version as well as the um, new into um, the new living translation, but let me start with this. All right, hold up. Let me fix y'all again. I don't want the stand to go crazy. Let's do it like this. All right, that look a little better. All right, let's get started. Let's work the word. I'm gonna try not to belay the hour and hold y'all hostage, but if I do, y'all know how I do. I ain't been on here for a minute, so I love y'all. I miss y'all. Y'all already know. Be a whooper sister, and we, I promise you, it's gonna be all good, because I'm good, you good, we good, God good, it's all good. Let's get started. Romans 8, 6 through 15, and it says in the NIV version, for those that are just joining, the mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subjected to death 
because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it's not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. I'm going to say that one again. Those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Alba, Father, blessed be the reading of the word of God today. All that will do it. And we're going to break it down scripture by scripture. Those who are joining, we are in Romans 8, 6 through 15. First scripture says, the mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. I'm going to say it again. The mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. So for those of us who are believers, if you are operating, your mind is operating in the flesh, eventually death will come. Your mind is governed by the spirit. You will have life and peace. Real simple. God ain't hard. God ain't hard. The word, if your mind is governed by the flesh, if you stay in your feelings all the time, you make decisions out of your feelings all the time, eventually it will be death. It won't work. It will be destroyed. It will go away. It won't sustain. It won't last. Amen. But if your mind is governed by the spirit, you will have life and peace. Amen. Those things that you make decisions on will last. Those things you will have peace beyond your understanding. Next verse. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. So see, when you and your feelings and you're trying to talk to God, and God and, and, uh, and He He be trying, but your mind is hostile to God. It, it cannot receive. You cannot hear. You be thinking you be hearing. But really, you're in your flesh. Your mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. So see, when you and your feelings, you ain't hearing nothing from God. You ain't even going to do nothing from God. Amen. Oh, I think this is going to be a little tough one today, but don't y'all jump off my boat. Amen. I promise you it's going to be good for you because it's, it's, it's good for me. God, And it was a little tough. Trust me, it'll be good for you. The mind, verse 7, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Meaning God tell you to do something or whatever the standards of the Lord, the commandments, you ain't, your hard headed self ain't doing nothing because your mind is governed by the flesh. Amen. Verse 8, those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Let me say that again. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Let's hit that one more time. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. So, Sometimes you got, here we go. Can I stop off for a quick second? We are human. We got that. We got these feelings, emotions. You know, we, you know, God did a wonderful job creating each and every one of us and he created us differently. But he created us for him. We were created by him for him. Y'all, I said that on the last video. Come on, we're going to start right there. If you can understand and keep in your spiritual maturity as you are growing and keep it in your mind, keep it, keep it, Keep it written on the tablets of your heart that everything down here was made by him for him. As you continue to grow and as you continue to get closer to him, you'll understand that when you operate in the flesh, you never please God. I'm talking to my brothers and sisters in Christ. Some of y'all leaders, y'all operate in the flesh based on some of y'all decisions that y'all make. And y'all think it's pleasing to God, but it's not. The word says it. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. And you may have folk thinking, oh, God is pleased. No, he's not because you're operating in the flesh. Verse 9, because I said I was going to get through all of them with you. You, 
however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. Oh, shucks. Let me hit that one again. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh. We're talking to brothers and sisters, believers and leaders in Christ. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God lives in you. All right, hold up. I got some stuff flashing. Okay. And then it says, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do, um, they do not belong to Christ. Oh, let me help you all. This is going to get real crazy. Brothers and sisters, because some of y'all tend to forget how free you really are. First sentence, you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit. If, here come the word if, if indeed the spirit of God lives in you. Now, to know that the spirit of God really lives in you, you have to know, you have to be living by the word. You have to be spiritually increasing in your life. Amen. You have to be spiritual and not religious. That means you believe and you're living out what you are with the word of God saying. That is the that is the guarantee. And guess what? Not only that, when the spirit of God is really in you, oh, it's going to show itself. And it brings a peace about it. It brings a peace. It eliminates the peace. The spirit of the Lord, if it's really in you, it chips away all everything that is in you that's not of God has got to go. Starts with your attitude, your speech, your decision making, anything in you that is not pleasing to God. When the spirit of the Lord is really in you, it will leave. Amen. And also, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. I'm going to say that again. Word says it. If anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. So just because mama is saved don't automatically mean you saved. Just because mama prays and and. And then you mimicking what she does doesn't mean that you belong to Christ. You have to receive salvation first. You have to be justified. See, some of y'all, like I said, y'all don't even, y'all not understanding how free you really are. I'm talking to my brothers and sisters in Christ. Some of y'all don't realize how free you really are. You still letting things of the world bound you. Mind, body, and spirit. You just be going along with stuff. It is what it is. That's just how it is. That's just, we just got to do, we got to do what they say, what it, what it is. Amen. I'm outside, Barbara, that hang with me. Let's go. Verse 10. But if Christ is in you, even though your body, talking about the flesh suit, is subjected to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. I'm going to say it again for you. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subjected to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. So this flesh suit, because it wants what it wants, and we commit sin, that's why it's important to repent every day. Mind, body, and spirit every day. Sometimes we sin in our thoughts and it may not come out of mouth, but your, your mind is just all messed up. Repent every, every day. Pray every day. Repent every day. Because the spirit will give you life because of righteousness. When you are striving to stay in right standing, when you have repented from your sins, your spirit man will come up and move that stuff out the way. All you have to do is continue to ask God to help you. Amen. Especially in this season. We are in the holiday seasons. A lot of people are struggling. We'll talk about that too. But I want to get through these verses with you because this really helped me. Um, verse 11. 
And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of the spirit who lives in you. Oh, that's real good. Because that also covers healing for those that may have suffered, those of us who are suffering illnesses in your body. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body because of the spirit that lives in you. So when you really have the spirit of Lord in you, the Lord will put his super on your natural every time. Every time. The word confirms it. Every time. Don't tell me God isn't good. You got a cold or whatever. You relying on the spirit of the Lord is in you. God puts his super on your natural and touch it every time. And you are healed. You are delivered. You are set free. Amen. Verse 12. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. I'm going to say it again. Verse 12. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it's not to the flesh to live according to it. Your life should not be living out of your flesh because we know your feelings are fickle. One minute you feel like this, another minute you don't. We That's where as representatives and ambassadors and whatever you want to call yourself of God, men, women, king, queens, whatever, you cannot live out of your flesh. Your life cannot be a replica of your flesh. Amen. I know that's a hard pill. Because see, sometimes we live out of our flesh because you know why? Because God gave us free choice. But living out this thing is costly. Amen. It's a costly. And if you want to pay that type of price, then go right ahead. But God has given you free choice. Freedom of choice. Amen. But the word says, we are not living according, you know, uh, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. You have to learn to let your spirit man kill the flesh every time, no matter what season, what decisions you have to make. Amen. Verse 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. I'm going to say that again. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Real simple. I ain't going deep. If I got some deep folks, I ain't got time. We could talk later. I can go deep with you. But I ain't, this is real simple. Brothers and sisters, if you live according to your flesh, Thing, if you make decisions out of your flesh, if you connect with things because it's appealing to the flesh, eye, your fleshly eye, you will die. Real simple. Real simple. Real simple. Don't, don't, don't go all off in 12 feet of water without me. Stay on my boat right now. I'm trust me, it's going to work out for you good. But if the spirit, it says, if by the spirit, you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Let me take that further to help you understand. Some, oh, shock. If you live according to the flesh, oh, it ain't going to hurt if I have a little drink. Oh, just a little smoke ain't going to. I feel okay. I'm good today. It's all right. You're going to die eventually. Amen. You're going to die. But if by the spirit you put to death those misdeeds, you know that smoking and drinking and cursing, pornography, fornicating, all of that kills the flesh. You see what I'm saying? But if you use the word of God and if you combat and do what God tell you to do, it will kill that and you will live. But it starts with putting the word in and believing it and doing it like real simple. You ain't got to go through all of extras. 
God said, don't fornicate. Don't fornicate. Don't, you're not supposed to drink. Don't drink. Smoking kills. Hey, they put it on the cigarette box that smoking causes cancer. Why are you smoking that? Why are you putting that little stick to your mouth? Oh, because I feel okay, though. See, but like I was telling, um, we were talking about this earlier. That's why y'all can see I'm on fire a little bit. Um, I was talking to one of my core people, and we were talking about smoking because I was speaking with someone. I was like, okay. I don't understand sometimes, you know, yeah, and we get, that's a warning, that's a big warning that it causes cancer and stuff like that, and you, and people still ingest, and they smoke and stuff like that, I don't tend to understand the mindset, but the mindset, of course, now I'm starting to get it, in the sense how we can be tempted, or we can fall into temptations of something that we clearly know that is not good for us, but I bet you, if you could really see for every puff that you take, and how the smoke gets in, and what it really, if you can see the inside of you, of how it's tearing your lungs up, and how you seeing the cancers and the stuff grow, I bet that'll put it down, but why do it have to go that far, amen, it shouldn't have to go that far when you got a clear warning, before you even be able to pick it up and put it to your mouth, I ain't trying to beat up on y'all smokers, I'm just letting you know, amen, and some of y'all that in the process of, you know, trying to get over it, keep the word of God on it, it says, but if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds, you confront that thing and you fight it head on with the word of God, you'll live. Real simple. Verse 14, for those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. I'm going to say that again. Those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. I'm going to say it one more time. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. I'm saying that three times because we all have to pray for the discerning of the Spirit and pray for the mind of Christ. Because when you encounter people and as we're going through this world and there's a lot of, you know, and spirit peeps spirit. And then there are a lot of false prophets popping up these days like Skittles. And people popping up, raising up these churches like it's, I'm for real. Like it's a sale or something. Come over here to my church. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Y'all better know the spirit by the spirit. Those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. We are in the last and evil days. The enemy ain't playing. This is not playing time. And I told y'all before, this is technically D-Day. We in the D-Day area, meaning... What Teresa meaning of D-Day is decision day. Make a decision. Who you going to serve? You going to serve God or you going to serve the devil? You going to be with God or you going to be of the world? And don't be ashamed of your decision. Because if you, because God gave you free choice. If you man and woman enough and big and bad enough to claim that you all listen to that. Because some of y'all ain't that grown. Just because your age is over the over the world uh, legal limit of it. Amen. Hold up, I got some stuff going on. Okay. That doesn't mean that you know it all and you done it all. Amen. Us believers, we're going to grow until Jesus comes back. You'll never arrive. Now, I've been meeting some people and seeing some people. I swear they think they just know it all, seen it all, done it all. You ain't did nothing. And half of this, as, as I'm seeing through my spiritual eyes, I'm like, you just scratching the surface. Amen. So pay attention, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Pay attention. I ain't saying you got to get all deep and cookie spooky. But pay attention to who's feeding into you, who's speaking into your ear, who's looking into your eye. You know the eyes are the window to your soul. What's your soul look like? Does it look like God or do it look like the devil? Is it a manipulator or is it authentic? Amen. Verse 15. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption, adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Alba Falk. I'm going to say that again. 
The spirit you receive does not make you slave so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Alba Father. Meaning, when you become a child of God, it does not mean that you are a slave to God. God getting up and watching you and saying, you better do this right. You better do that right. And if you don't do this right, you're going to get this. And if you don't do this right, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to get you, get you, get you, get you. That's not the type of God he is. It's not for you to live in fear of him. When the Bible talks about fear, it's talking about a reverence, respect. Just like we respect our mother. We respect our fathers. We respect our elderly. We respect our mentors and teachers and leaders. It's a reverent respect. Give honor to where honor is due. Amen. So when you become, and then this is for those that are receiving, you know, my babes in Christ. When you become a child of God, it doesn't mean, oh, Lord, I got to, you know, God going to get me. I got to be scared of God. I got to live perfect. You'll never live perfect in this thing called flesh. I got to think right. Oh, Lord, I don't, if God don't, if I ain't, th oh, I thought this God going to kill my mind. I had somebody tell me that recently. I was like, why? I was like, get out of here with that. Get out of here with that. The world and some of these false prophets misrepresenting God. That's why you got to know God for yourself. Sidebar time. Let me sidebar because y'all know I'm on fire. But that I want y'all to work on. Word of encouragement. This is the life through the spirit. Romans 8, 6 through 15. Can I read the whole thing one more time? And then I'm going to sidebar. Then I got some tips. And then I'm going to have the conclusion. And I'm out. And then y'all know I got to see if I see y'all because I haven't been on here for a while. So, our key scripture, I'm trying to get into y'all to know and to really keep pulling on the spirit of the Lord, especially around the holiday times. And I can honestly say the winter time and the holiday times is not my best of seasons. Amen. I'm honest about that. I do struggle, but hey, the past couple of years, the struggle, honey, I've been, the, I have definitely overcame in this year. Hey, I'm telling you right now, I learned how to manage my anxieties and depression. Yes, it's an ongoing thing. It's not a poof, poof when you have depression that, oh, okay, I'm cured. No, when you are a servant of God, it's an on-day fight. The flesh and the spirit fight every day, every day. Amen. And you have to always learn to be combated up. And I thank y'all. I thank my prayer warriors. I thank my core people. I thank those that are genuinely care about me. And they care about not just me and the natural. They care about me by the spirit. They really care about where I'm going at in life. They really care about what I um you know, what God is doing, and they really care about the decisions and the choices that I have to make and the connections I with. And I thank y'all, and, and some correct me, and I thank you that you are willing to correct and, and be like, wait a minute, Teresa, you going all the whole, whole, you going out the lane, come on back over here. I thank you for that. Amen. But let me hit this one once again for those maybe joining, like to read it all together, because this whole, this whole little piece has really you know, it excited me and hopefully you'll see what I'm talking about when you have life through the spirit. Romans 8, 6 through 15, the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, how, you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if, the, but if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to the mortal bodies because of the spirit who lives in him. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it's not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death 
the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Alba Father. Amen. Romans uh, 8, 6 through 15. Life through the Spirit. What does life through the Spirit look like? Look, just like I've read it, amen, and it's a liberating thing. God is not hard, amen. Some of y'all think God is hard. The world, we, the world we're living in is by barn right now. Before I give y'all my tips, and I'm out. No, matter of fact, let me get the tips first. Let me get the tips first, because the tips is good. I, 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 I've been working on the tips. Tips is good. I wrote down five tips on trusting God at any season. Amen. So number one, don't worry, pray first. Once you do this, the devil will immediately launch and try to attack you with situations and stresses that will cause you to worry and be anxious. And turn, um, and, and, mm, I'm sorry, it will cause you to worry and be anxious. Go with me real quick to help you with that to Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Okay, hold up. Let me get it. Philippians 4, because I because I put some scriptures for my tips for y'all. All right. Hallelujah. I think that's right. Wait a minute. Okay, yep. So, tip number one, don't worry, pray first. Once you do this, the devil will immediately launch and try to attack you with situations and stresses that will cause you to worry. So when you start, number one, don't worry, but when it start coming in, I want y'all to go to Philippians 4, 6 through 7, which says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God that will transcend all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. See, that y'all know that's a core cool scripture for me. That, that that came about the spirit. Because that's what I do. When the enemy tries to launch those depressing moments or those anxieties, I go right to Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God. I'm telling you right now that peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind. In Christ Jesus. Amen. Number two. Where's number two? Because I wrote this down for y'all my tips. Uh, number two. Pay attention closely to your thoughts and your feelings. Begin training yourself to notice those negative thoughts when they begin to creep up into your mind. And then immediately take them captive and bring them to obey Christ. For a scripture for that, go with me to 2 Timothy, uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6. 2 Corinthians, okay, let me get that out of the way. Okay, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6, and it says, The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. That is 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6. I read it in the um, NIV version. Let me look at that. Let me. I want to see what that says real quick because I like that scripture too. I want to look at that in the New Living Translation. Read it to you guys in the New Living Translation. And the New Living Translation, it says, We use God mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture the, their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. And after you have become fully obedient, we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. Oh, I like that. that that's all good. 
that that hits it right to the point amen so number two i said um i said pay close attention to your thoughts and feelings number three keep your heart and mind focused on the word of god take all those words some situations and thoughts captive and replace it with the word of god sometimes when you start really stuff the enemy can really throw and the heaviness come on you got to take it and make it subjective to the word and replace it with the word of god go with me to ephesians 6 um ephesians 6 13 through 18 let me try that hold up okay um all right teresa evans hold on okay not a problem <laughs> i'll do it this way trying to have some technical difficulties there devil is a liar ephesians 6 13 through 18 Oh, okay, here it is. And this is in the New Living Translation. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For the shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all these uphold the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil put on salvation put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit which is the word of god pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere amen take that scripture and apply it when those thoughts come Put it on the word and make those things come subjective and make them be obedient to God. If it won't be obedient to God, it will flee out of you. Amen. Number four. My fourth thought, because I said five. Never doubt and keep believing the promises of God. Go with me to John 14, 26. I know I'm taking y'all all over the place today. Because this word, I'm telling you, it, 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 it was just all in my spirit. John 14, 26. Because y'all know normally I'm right. I, I have it all written out, all pretty. No, nah, uh, the, the Holy the Holy Spirit said, wait a minute, that's not right. Oh, yes it is. But the advocate... The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So, never doubt and keep believing the word of God. John 14, 6 says, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Amen. And number five, continue to strive every day to represent him well in all that you say, think, and do. So there will be your five tips. Amen. So, in conclusion, family, when you keep believing, when you keep praising, when you keep trusting God, only he knows how it all turns out, regardless of what you are going through. And those who belong to him it turns out well. So don't despite hardships, allow God to use them as training ground for building up your faith and drawing you closer to him. Amen. So what do your life look like through the spirit? Amen. Sometimes we have to take a self-examination of what our life what we what our life is really like through the spirit are you really living the life that god has pre already predestined and ordained for you some of you think you are but then you really not 
are you really sure that you are doing the will of God in every area of your life? I'm talking in your career, in your whatever position you in. Is it what God really wants you to do down here on this side of heaven, on earth? Some of us have lived out and done things because what other people have said. Some of you are living your life because of other people. Amen. Once you really taste and see that the Lord is good, and some of you, I'm telling you, he'll, he'll reveal to you your whole life. But some of you, God has revealed to you and showed you by breadcrumbs, you know, bit by bit, what he really wants you to do. But you're afraid. You're afraid to do it. You're afraid to, you are afraid of becoming. You are afraid of waiting because of who you have around you. Who are you connected to? Because you, we, we, you don't want to disappoint others. Like I said, it goes back to, and, and see, to cancel all that out, what it goes back to, what I'm going to be saying now too, you know, over and over again to y'all, everything is made by him for him. Amen. When you get that, that will cancel out the fears of becoming. You have to continue to strive to be holy. You have to continue to strive to be all what God calls you to be. This life is going to end one day and you may be confronted with God with the question of what have you done with the life that I have given you for me some of you may have a list of trying to tell God all the accomplishments hell my head at those degrees those awards those diplomas those buildings none of that ain't gonna matter to him that's nice real nice but it ain't going to matter in eternity. He looks at the heart. Is your heart really authentic and genuine to God? Are you really living your life behind closed doors for the Lord? Because see, when you get in church and you get in front of people, you can fool us all day long. But you can't fool the spirit of the Lord. Mm -mm, baby. And you can't fool children of God who really live by the spirit of the Lord. Amen. So, all that said, and um, one thing I want to um, sidebar about one of my core people, we were talking about prayer. As far as some, uh, she, we were talking about how she was addressed, people were coming to her wondering why prayer wasn't, their prayers weren't answered. Why their prayers weren't, get, they felt like their prayers weren't answered. Well, and I love talking with her because we go all in scripture. We was all over the place in the word. The, the word of God is like a big playground to us. And you get to find all the little treasures. It's like God throws the rubies out and then he opens the gate for us. And he says, go. sometimes he'll say, go get it. We, we have the topic. We're talking about prayer. And then we just all, lo I mean, God just opens and illuminates the word, his word right up to us. And it's like treasures. And we just gather them up. Gather them up. Our spirit just gathering it up. But, you know, real quick, as we were talking about prayer itself, prayer is like the telephone. That's what I told. It's like the telephone. It's a, it's the a, it's a main telephone to God. But we misuse it. Because some of us get on the telephone and we say all we want to say. Lord, I want this, 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 this. Lord, I thank you. You know, I thank you in advance because, look, I want this for mom and them. I want to be healed. I want this. And, oh, don't forget, I need a husband. I need a girlfriend. You know, and also, Lord, you know, please let me get this promotion. And, oh, Lord, please let me finish school. And also, remember when I asked you about, can I get this house? And, and can I move to whatever? Okay, thank you. Amen. Click. That's how some of y'all prayers are. And then y'all get upset and have a nerve. They get impatient. And then you start begging. Lord, please. Please, Jesus. Please, Jesus. Please, Jesus. Please give me this promotion. Click. Prayer is a two-way communication. It's not a one-way. Some of us in, in the world sometimes, and as we are grown, grown up and taught. Wait a minute, family. Let me fix. I'm fixing my... Laptop, okay. 
some of us have been taught, you know, when you first come into um, learning about God and, you know, as you are uh, building your relationship based on the world and your background and um, your culture, you look at prayer as it's just all about making requests and petitions. And knowing that in our consciousness, we know that God created all things and he can do anything. That's the type of relationship. That's all your relationship is about is asking and receiving. As far as you ask and God will do. No, prayer is a two-way. Meaning you can, yes, you ask, but sometimes to really receive, you have to be quiet and listen to him answer you. Some of you are wondering why your prayers are not answered because some of you are, like we were talking, you're in the asking phase. You haven't entered into the realm. You haven't entered into the presence of God. You're on that first round, you know, that first little layer. And then you, you think your prayer, you know, even though, yes, God hears what you're saying. I'm talking to believers because if you ain't his, you don't belong to him. He don't hear nothing you saying. He ain't obligated to answer you. Amen. And um, a lot of you are praying prayers that for real spiritually you ain't ready for. But you think on the outer because you grown that you are due it. You see what I'm saying? That it is owed to you. Well, I've been faithful. I've been going to church every day. I pay tithes and offerings and I be doing this and I'm in all these ministries and I've been serving for 15 years in the house of God and I would need to see my blessings and the Lord, Lord, it don't seem like you're coming through. That's nice. Those deeds. But inwardly, spiritually, you ain't nowhere, you ain't nowhere near ready for what you are petitioning for. And some of you don't want to sit in prayer long enough to hear God's answers on what you are asking for. Even those prayers that you are asking others for. Oh, shucks. Don't y'all jump off this boat. I know it's getting ready to get tight up in here, but we're going to row this thing together until we get to shore. Amen. But for real, think about your prayers. But guess what? The way that your prayers can be answered First things first, check the motive of your heart and check yourself on why. Think about why you are asking what you are about to ask. Think about why you about to ask what you about to ask God for. Do you really want it? Because sometimes, especially when we're in troubled seasons, when nobody likes to be in trouble or have a hard time, God, get me out of this. A lot of times, you the one got yourself in it. But you want God to rescue you out of it. But also, God gives you warning before you make a decision. But God gives us free will, too. Now, God, if God is in your life and he, you're in a relationship with him, he will let him have to know his opinion. But you still have to make a decision. You have to make a choice. And you have to be man and woman enough to be able to live by what you choose. Amen. And deal with the consequences. Right, wrong, or indifferent. Some of y'all don't want to grow up on that. Some of y'all think y'all do. You ain't do anything. Everything is made by him for him. He died for you. You didn't die for him. Some of y'all wouldn't even do it. If God asked you to die for him, take the same beating that Christ took, y'all know y'all run. <laughs> y'all know all run. Y'all be negotiating, pleading, and ple cheesing, and pleading. But you say you love him. You say he is Lord. See, when he is really Lord in your life, everything about you belongs to him. You can't do anything without him, even make decisions. That's the intimate relationship he wants, y'all. It's not a controlling relationship. He just wants to be included, just like how we include each other. Because guess what? When you got a problem, you ain't got no problem getting on that phone, calling up your boys or calling up your girlfriend. Girl, look, what you think? Oh, girl, this is what's going on. Yeah, yup, you right, girl. What you think? Okay, I'm thinking, you thinking. Yeah, yup, 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 yup. We could do this. Let's do this. Okay. Y'all done see that made a decision. No one prayed. 
No one asks God what he thinks. And then you go off and make an executive decision. Let's talk about jobs too. You go off and make an executive decision. And then after a while, yeah, it starts off good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's flourishing and flourishing. All of a sudden, it starts going downhill. You start losing money. People start leaving. What, what happened? Oh, because you didn't consider God from the beginning. God sitting on the sideline like I, 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 you didn't even you didn't even invite me to the meeting. You didn't even want to hear what you, you you just came you just called me up on the phone said what you had to say and click, and then gonna catch your attitude like God I did pray about this what's going on why you ain't answer my prayer. God like I know he could be on his throne be scratching his head sometimes like I know she did not or he did not say what he just said to me. Now, when I was trying to say something, you hung up the phone. So I say all that to say, my brothers and sisters, you really want your prayers answered? You really want the seeds that you grow, not just in yourself, but those that you plant in others? Make sure, like I always say, check the motive of your heart. Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you planting the seed that you are planting? Everything is, you know, God will bring your assignment to you in everything, in every shape, in every form. Everything ain't for you. Some people do things so they want to be seen, want to be recognized, whatever. That just gets on my nerves, all that extra. But um, check the motive of your heart. Some things ain't even for you to do. Sometimes you need to just say thank you. And for those of us that do struggle, and I know people along with me around the holiday times and the enemy, you know, tend to fight us and you want to throw the depression and throw the anxiety, your prayer should be thank you. You shouldn't be asking for nothing. I'm just saying personally, don't ask God for nothing. Thank him. Thank when you're going through a hard time, thank him. Because when you have a thankful and a grateful heart and you're keeping the focus on him, what it does, it lifts you up out of the situation and it keeps your eyes off of what's going on around you. Because those of us that suffer with the depression, the enemy can easily make us turn to what our circumstances and what's going on. You ain't going to never get a job. Look, you can't even buy your kids nothing for Christmas. You can't even get out of debt. You ain't going to never get no husband. Look, everybody booed up holiday time. You ain't got no boo. I told you, Lord, I wasn't going to give you no husband. It's holiday time. Take your eyes off of your circumstances because God ain't hard of hearing. He heard your prayer. And like I say, first and foremost, ask yourself, why are you asking for what you are about to ask? You about to ask God for more money. Why? Before you even go to the throne room, holy of holies, ask yourself why. You got to be honest about you. You asking God, you want to make, why? Jesus, I'm about to scratch myself. <laughs> but I got to be on. I, hey, I'm, I'm just saying, we're gonna, I got to be on. And see, some of this, trust me, y'all. I eat this tea. Oh, I eat this tea. Oh, Teresa got to eat what she, trust me, before I come on here and I share and encourage y'all, trust me, I got to eat this too. And if I'm going to be a big girl about it and we together on this journey, you can do it. Because guess what? If Christ can do it, we all can do it. Amen. So ask yourself why you want the promotion, why you want the job, why you want to get this, why you want to move here, why you building this, why you doing all this. You say it's for the glory of God, but is it really? Be still and know that he is God. He got it. And one thing about praying to be thankful, you're going to learn how to be patient. And some of y'all don't want to do that because some of y'all are all over the place. You're doing too much. You got to be doing this. I got to go shopping. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to get my hands. I got to get my nails. Oh, Lord, I got to make sure I'm with them. I got to be quiet. Some 
of you take on responsibilities and take on, y'all take on activities just to be doing something because y'all scared to be alone. Y'all scared of listening to your inner voice. And some of you are afraid to look inside of your own heart and see what's really in it. Some of you are afraid to let God let you see who you really are. You want to see how God see and sit up in daddy's lap? Because God will let you sit up in his lap and he's going to put the lens right on you. And you're going to be like, oh my goodness, that's really in me? God like, "Mm mm-hmm. And sometimes that's a scary view. Amen. But I'm dying. I I sidebar about prayer. But for those that, you know, um, definitely uh, the brokenhearted, the um, silent sufferers, those of us that tend to, yes, especially around now, and uh, the enemy really trying to get people to spend a bunch of money. Y'all better stop all that, you know. Because the world can make you get away from the real reason for the season. The season is all about him. This is your quiet time. The winter time, I've learned now. Be still. That's why I'm still. Oh, and I'm loving it. And ain't nobody going to pull me out my peaceful stillness. Oh, I'm loving it. Oh, I'm so, this season now, because like I normally said in the past, that I will struggle with depression and anxiety after my birthday, after October the 12th, and I have to really fight, and I got to be fasting and praying and laying on my face, rolling all over the floor, acting all the fool, you know, really, I got to do all that, you know, sometimes for real, I will cry, and you know, now I got a better way of managing it. The Lord has, honey, whomever the son, he set me free on, oh, I, Teresa grew up on a lot of things, and so my core people, when I grow and then they see that I grow, they say, Teresa, go to the wall and draw your line. I'm like, yep, I'm taller in the spirit now. Oh, I'm stronger now. Oh, I'm I'm over that. Oh, I don't do them things no more. Just like a toddler. You see what I'm saying? You can't fit into a playpen no more. Oh, I'm out of that. All to him I owe. And God loves us. He will help you if you allow him to truly help you. And stop trying to be strong all the time. Some of my strong folks, y'all know who y'all are. I was there too before. Stop holding stuff in. Go to God first and he will lead you to the people. And not only that, he ain't got to lead you to the people. He's going to bring the people to you. Everything is made by him for him. Amen. Let us pray though. Let me pray you out and then we'll chit chat some more. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ha! Ah, you are. I am so in awe of you, Lord. I thank you for this time with my social media family. You know their position in my heart. You know how much I care for them and love them. I love them because you loved all of us first. And that is your commandment to love you with all our heart, mind, and soul, and spirit, and to love one another. Lord, I thank you for this time with them and for those that may view this video. Lord, I ask you in your name to continue to give us peace. But Lord, most importantly, in spite of asking, Lord, I want to just thank you for the peace. Because you give your love and your peace and your grace and your mercy unselfishly. God! Help us to stop being so un. Help us to stop being selfish, especially around this time. Lord, help us to be more mindful of one another. Help us to see like you see. Help us to pay attention to one another in this season. Some of us are really hurting. Lord, help us to have empathy and sympathy and compassion for one another. Help us to stop being anxious and worrying in the name of Jesus. I bind up the attack of the enemy over your people, over the sick and shut in, over the ones that have lost uh, lost loved ones around this time. Those that suffer in silence, those are battling with the battles of their mind, depression, anxiety, any mental illness in the name of Jesus. I bind up and annihilate the attack of the enemy on the mind of your people. We have your mind. Our mind is the mind of Christ in the name of Jesus. Oh God, you are so awesome. Words can't describe how wonderful you are. Let us be reminded through this key scripture today, through Romans 8, 60, 15, life through the spirit. 
Let us be reminded that the spirit that you raised Jesus up from the dead is in us as well. We can rise up and get out of those dead and dry places, making us new, Lord God. Help and remind us, Lord God, of how free we really are. You said whomever the Son set free is free indeed. And that's just not free, Lord God, from healing. We are free in every area of our life, from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. Some of us who have been working tirelessly, Lord God, in certain positions in the body of Christ, we tend to forget how free we really are. Lord, touch all of us at our very core to remind us of the power and the freedom that we have for being your sons and daughters. Lord, I thank you. I give you the glory and the honor for it now. I give you the glory and the honor for every life under the sound of my voice. Lord, cover them in the highways and byways, wherever they have to travel today, Lord God. Lord God, cover their families, their children, Lord God. Whatever they have to do, give them travel and mercy. Let them come back to their home the way that they left it in the name of Jesus. Lord God, continue to help us to grow up on a lot of things. Remove everything in us, Lord God, that is not of you. Help us to be submissive and submitted to you. Even though the world may try to beat us down and life itself may put so much pressure on your people, Lord, continue to give us the strength to soar, to soar like eagles, Lord God, and to represent you well. I give you the glory and honor for it now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Life through the spirit. Live your life. What does it look like? Are you really willing to live your life through the spirit? Or you just want a counterfeit life? Are you really living and striving to be all what God called you to be? Or are you playing? This ain't the time to be playing. Sometimes you're going to have to hurt some folks, disappoint some people, but your life is not about people, places, and things. All of this is for your enjoyment. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. Enjoy your job. Enjoy your church family. Enjoy your teachers and mentors and all of that. Those are gifts from God to us. That's it. Amen. So I love y'all with all the love of Christ. I held y'all hostage and some of y'all been hanging with me. Hold up, but let me see that. Let me see if anybody on that hanging with me. Oh, wow. Oh, Carl on. Hi, Carl. Oh, they coming up. Hold up. Let me hit the wave. How you doing? Oh, what's up, mother? Mother on. Hi, mother. Oh, thank you, mother. Thank you so much for being on with me. Okay, they stuck again. All right, now, this is a new phone. I don't know what the problem is. But thank y'all for those that I, that I can't see or something. I know it's more because it, it go do a little dun, something, something. But anyway, thank y'all for being on with me this afternoon. I held y'all hats, y'all. And I know y'all hang. But y'all know that um I love y'all with all the love of Christ. And I don't like to be too much, you know, too far away from you guys. And um I thank you for all your inbox messages. Some of you definitely keep in touch. And I thank you for thinking of me. You send me messages thinking of me, checking in on me. I appreciate that. I, I do. I appreciate all the little things that God uses people for, as well as the big things. Big things are good, too. Amen. But I really do appreciate the little things because some of you come right on time. Y'all really do. Y'all come right on time with the things. So I love y'all with all the love of Christ. Again, if you came in, you can review the video here or you can come over to YouTube. Also, come and check out Spiritual Increase. Get some inspiration, some motivation, and some encouragement. I am your number one cheerleader, your tour guide through that website. Come and get what you need. Amen. Get some good resources to help you to continue to strengthen your relationship with God. I have a resource page on there. Some good readings that um can definitely strengthen and you know just keep your mind focused on him and you know keep your mind up out of the world and all that stuff it's a lot going on y'all it's a lot going on you know so we this is now you really need to make sure that your anchor is solid amen solid on god 
So I love y'all. I've held y'all hashtags long enough. I will be calling and speaking to some of you soon. God bless y'all. Next time around, y'all know I'm coming with a scripture for today. This is a lot of word, but I had to get it all out. I'm good now. Holy Spirit, this is rest day. I'm dying. Teresa get right now. Teresa can rest and enjoy the afternoon. I'm off. It is good. I'm telling you to be um, <clears throat> in the presence of the Lord and uh, just live, love, laugh, and be happy. Always strive to be obedient. Do what God says when he says and how he says it. And also continue to go through the process of forgiving. And you know when you do that, like I told you, that's threefold too. Because when you truly forgive, you cannot bring it up to that person. You can't talk about it to others. And you have to forget about it. Amen. But we are winding down. We got a few weeks left in 2019. 2019, but still all the way to December 31st, we're going to continue to speak life. Speak life. Step up. Step out. Keep in mind it's all about him. And we are going forward. That's the only direction we're going. Focus on real wins and reduce distractions. Amen. I love y'all. And um, oh, how y'all doing, my new followers? Got some new followers. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? doing? So I love y'all so much. God bless y'all. Be talking to some of you soon. Thank you for being on with me. And again, um, you can see it on Facebook Live. You can come over to YouTube, download it up soon. And come on over www.spiritualincrease.com. Um, amen. Love y'all so much. Mwah, 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 mwah. All the love. And um, enjoy rest and uh, let God be God. Amen. Love y'all. Talk to you soon.